Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. I'm back with some home updates for you today. There's a few things I've got to show you. I've got a new piece of furniture that I bought from the charity shop, which I'm really excited about and I've got some plans for. And also I just thought I would share with you a few little updates around the home as it's been a while and I know some of you are asking things like how the bathroom renovation is going and stuff like that so I thought it'd be a nice opportunity to update you today. It's the weekend, it is Saturday and I'm having a very lazy afternoon. It's a gloomy day outside so I've been lay on the sofa. I've just watched a film called Poker Face. As you know I'm working with Sky Cinema as part of the Sky Cinema Club where I get to review one of their films every month and Poker Face, oh did you hear that? <laughs> the kittens are running up and down behind the sofa having a good old chase. But yeah, as I say, I'm working with Sky Cinema as part of the Sky Cinema Club and every month I get to review one of their films. And this film called Poker Face caught my eye. It's probably not the sort of film that I would usually go for, something called Poker Face, I don't know. Um, but I was intrigued and I'm really pleased that I gave it a watch. I'll just read to you um, what it says. It says, the stakes are raised when tech billionaire Russell Crowe's annual poker night with his childhood friends takes a murderous turn. Kent Sky original thriller with Liam Hemsworth. So talk about A-listers. Um, so this film is set in Australia and it starts off with a bit of a throwback to the character Jake, who's played by Russell Crowe, to his childhood and to a game of poker when they're all kids and some bullies turn up. And then we fast forward to the present day when we learn that this character Jake is a 57 year old gambler. And we learn that him and his childhood friends have made a lot of money, but circumstances circumstances have pulled them apart over the years so they're going to be all reunited for this poker game. By the way, if you like your property, it features some stunning property in Sydney especially. There's an apartment that they film in and it is incredible. The views from it are just amazing. So I really enjoyed that part of the film as well. It touches on the character's relationship with his teenage daughter. It also touches on grief. And then this reunion brings them all together for this poker game with a bit of a twist. I don't wanna give away any spoilers, but it is very gripping. And around this poker game, truths are revealed and all the drama kind of unfolds from there. And yeah, as I say, it's not the usual film that I would pick out. So I'm really glad that I gave this one a watch because I did enjoy it. And I'm going to do is link the trailer for it in the description box so you can have a little look for yourself and let me know if you've watched it as well and let me know what you thought of it if you did and what's your poker face like I don't know if I've ever played a game of poker I don't think I have I'm probably more of a snap <laughs> snap or pears man myself but um yeah what's your poker face like do you think you'd be good at it I don't know what mine would be I always want to smile, so <laughs> I think I might struggle with a game of poker. Um, but yeah, um, do have a little look at the trailer in the description box, and I will leave more information on Sky Cinema down there for you as well. This film was a Sky original, and also have loads of hit blockbusters to choose from on there too, so well worth a little look. I'll leave all of their information in the description box. And thank you to Sky Cinema for sponsoring this part of today's vlog. I've got the candle lit, this one is the one that I picked up at the tabletop sale for 50p and it's Yankee Candle, The Perfect Tree and it's smelling very festive in here. It's getting to that time, isn't it? But yeah, I'm gonna show you a few bits around the home. Before I do, I want to head out because I feel like it's gonna be getting dark soon and I fancy some fresh air. Yeah, let's go out for a little stroll and then I'll meet you back here and show you the updates. I'm feeling trapped down on the floor I don't know what for Feels like I'm gonna lose Silence to hold. I can't let it go. Chain up, no one knows. But I won't let the stormy seas throw me in open water. Let me have my peace and leave me till tomorrow. Wind into my sail, away from things I let go. Floating on the waves, we go bottoms up. We go all the way. When you're feeling down. Okay, I am back from the shops. I have mittens here on my lap and I got a couple of bits while I was out. I picked up one of these, which is a radiator key. I know, so exciting. <laughs> I couldn't find one anywhere. These are the keys that you use to bleed your radiators, which is a job that I've got on my list of things to do to make sure my radiators are working efficiently for winter. And yeah, I haven't got around to it yet because I couldn't find a key. So I went into the hardware store and picked this up. And also, in a local card shop, I spied this, which is a paper advent calendar, and I really liked 
the look of the design of this. I thought it was really pretty with the London buses. And what building is that? I'm not sure. We've got um, Big Ben and the London Eye in the background. And yeah, it's just got the little windows that you open and it's 3D. So I thought it'd be quite nice to have a paper one this year and quite a traditional one. So let's have a little look and see how it goes together. What do we do? Do we just pop it out? It says 3D, there we go. You just stand it up like that. How pretty is that? I love it. It's by a company called um, Real and Exciting Designs London. Um, Real and Exciting Designs, I guess is the company name. Um, yeah, love that. So I'm going to pop that on the table, I think, or on the side here. And I'll open the doors throughout December. But yeah, I couldn't resist that. And I wanted to show you um, this book as well that I picked up from a charity shop and it's called Decorating with Candles Year Round. I think it's quite an old book. Um, it's got quite kind of vintagey looking scenes in it. But I wanted to um, get some inspiration because I thought this Christmas I want to keep things quite simple um, with the kittens being around. I know I'm talking about candles, but obviously whenever I light candles I do supervise them and the kittens do tend to stay away from candles. They might kind of approach them and give them not even a sniff, just like they have a little look and they know what they are. Um, but yeah, I do obviously keep them supervised if I light any. But I want to keep the decorating quite simple this year. I'm thinking of even maybe keeping the tree super simple. I might even just put some like orange on it or something. I know that the cats don't particularly like orange, so maybe I'll just decorate it with some natural bits like that. And hopefully then they won't um, completely tear it down, but we shall see. Um, but yeah, it's got some nice ideas in here. Um, to use candles in your home throughout the year and they're so stylish aren't they so i thought i'd have a flick through there and get some inspiration it's a really nice book yeah it's called the candle at home decorating with candles all year round so i've got pumpkin just behind you here having a snooze Are you tired <laughs> he's about to drop off and mittens is just behind me here on the sofa and i think she's about to nod off too <laughs> Before it gets dark, let me take you outside actually and I'll give you a quick update of the roof garden. I haven't been out here for a good tidy up in a while, so that is definitely on the cards before we go into winter. But there's some actual olives I want to show you that have grown. Look at the size of these. They're really big. I'm not sure if I could pick those and actually eat them. Let me know what you think. But yeah, we've got um, one, two, three. Yeah, so that's coming on nicely since I repotted it. It's got nice and big. And then the geraniums are still going strong in November. And then this wreath is something that I made recently as part of an afternoon tea that I went to at the library at the Marriott Hotel County Hall. And I did a wreath making workshop and this is what I came up with. So I went on with some citrus fruits, some limes, excuse the aeroplane going over, and some pine cones, just kept it nice and um, natural and on with this bow as well. Luke was there too so we had a really lovely afternoon and he made one as well. I'm sure he's probably shown it um, on his vlog. In fact he was vlogging that day so you might have seen that already. Um, but yeah I've just hung it up out here and then over here I've got some dumpster dive finds. So I found this metal kind of bucket. What do you call that? A bucket or a plant um, holder like a vase and this one too. And I just thought they were really nice so I picked them up. There's actually a smaller one in there as well. Um, yeah, square one. So I got those and I thought they'd be quite nice for styling things inside as well, but yeah, they've got a bit wet because they don't have any drainage holes. So I need to empty them out and let them dry in the sun. The fairy garden is still going strong. You can see the these things have really grown and spread out all over it. Gosh, those aeroplanes are noisy, aren't they? Wouldn't mind being on that right now, going off to somewhere sunny. And I'm not sure what this is that's growing through the shutters that I painted, but I think it might be a weed of some sort. It's growing out of the pot that has the clematis in it, but yeah, it looks quite pretty, so I'm just gonna leave that for the time being, but it seems to have really taken over here. <laughs> okay, let's show you my charity shop find piece of furniture. Ta-da! <laughs> so, this is it, and before you think, what on earth are you doing? Why is that down there? This isn't for this room, it's just in here because there's no other space for it at the moment, so got it propped up in the living room at the moment but it's basically a kitchen shelving unit that I spied in the charity shop for £40 and then it was £10 to have it delivered and it's made out of solid wood 
Um, sorry about the light, by the way. It has got quite dark outside now, so I'm just um, with filming lamps. But yeah, so we've got the kind of panelling at the back, and then the shelves have these grooves in, so you can prop up plates on the shelves. And they've got hooks all the way across the front. It's painted kind of strangely, because we've got a few colours going on. We've got this kind of really pale, like a creamy, almost green. Um, yeah, across between cream and green <laughs> and then we've got a pale green at the back and then grey and then underneath there's some red there's some random red painted on here um i think i'll probably keep it this color i think and maybe just paint the rest of it similar to that so it's kind of creamy it does look slightly green <laughs> but yeah this kind of yeah i don't know what you call that butterscotch maybe I'm not sure um but the detail on it is fantastic it's a really good quality piece um, you can see all the um, intricate work on the front here we've got the nice arch shape here and the shelves these shelves actually um, move you can just slot, slot them in so you've got all the slots all the way down so you can adjust the height of those shelves so it's a good bit of craftsmanship let me just show you the top as well so you can see a bit dusty I have cleaned it once but I think it needs another blast <laughs> but you can see um, yeah it's all solid wood and well made and it's got these kind of old screws in it yeah can you see those um i think it might be quite an old piece but i just thought that this would be really good in the kitchen now it's a small kitchen but i thought a piece like this could really add some i guess like a focal point um yeah and it will be perfect obviously for displaying Lots of crockery, you could put some pans on here, get all my mugs across the front, all the nicest ones of course. Um, so yeah, little project there, it just about fits, I'll show you where it's going to go. And in case you're wondering why there's some tin foil on there, it is to stop the kitties going on there and using it as a toilet. So let's go into the kitchen and I'll show you where it will end up. So you may remember I put this shelf in here from the bathroom. It's got rather cluttered, um, it needs a bit of a thin out and a sort out, but yeah. So I thought we could put the whole entire unit on this wall and it will sit on top of the worktop here, which is just wide enough for it to sit on, which might look quite strange. So what I thought I would do is once it's on there, I might add a piece of wood across the front so you wouldn't even see this worktop anymore. I might even put a piece of like thin ply underneath it make it all wood and then put some like beading across the front maybe square off this corner and I'll add a bit more support down here and then what I thought I might do underneath this then because it might look a bit strange with shelves and then all these random little shelves that I'd built underneath I might actually add a brass rail and maybe hang a curtain there if the cats <laughs> don't destroy it. I just hide tins and things under there and keep the mugs down there um, but yeah I don't know um, we'll see how it goes but that's where it's going to go um, so this will come down and maybe I'll end up using that in the bathroom Go back to its original place. I'll keep you posted. I'm not sure when this project will be I might be with shelving in the living room for a while or I might not um, But obviously I will keep you posted and that up there is the cat plate that I told you about in a recent vlog in case you're wondering and you hadn't seen it before that I got from that um, pottery I bought that plate well before the kittens arrived. I'd wanted cats for such a long time. Okay, let's go and show you the bathroom next. Before we go up, I want to show you this gadget that I bought from Amazon. This is a pet hair scraper. I'm gonna link it in the description box for you. If you have a pet, you need to get one of these. They're not very expensive at all. Really nice and sturdy. And on here, you have kind of like a, a rough edge. Now let me show you what this does. So as you can see, the stairs are definitely due a hoover, but, oh these two, they love playing up and down the stairs. Let me show you how this works. Oh my goodness, this is embarrassing. <laughs> and I promise you, these were hoovered literally days ago. The kittens find this fascinating. And yeah, you're going to judge me now, but get one of these and try it on your staircase or on your rugs and it's amazing what comes off. I mean a lot of this is actually just like the fluff of the um, carpet mixed in with some pet hair. I know, come on. <laughs> you got there. But yeah, 
very satisfying and also you don't have to be dragging the um, vacuum cleaner up and down the stairs you kind of do this first and it makes your vacuuming a lot less um, intensive what i know pumpkin can i train you to do the hoovering please <laughs> Welcome to the bathroom. It's probably a bit echoey in here, so apologies about that. But I'm sat on the bath at the moment. You can see the tiles behind me. These are the same tiles as the ensuite in the loft. Really pleased with them. Um, and yeah, it has taken a very long time. Didn't really want to be doing any decorating over summer and the MDF cupboards needed a lot of sanding, a lot of prepping, and lots of stages. I have been vlogging that separately, so I think I'm going to do a full kind of bathroom makeover video. Um, but yes, it is really getting there, and I'm very pleased with how it's looking. So let me just show you the colour of the walls and also the colour of the cupboards. So this is the colour of the walls. It's quite hard to show you at the moment because it's dark outside, but it's kind of like a creamy off-white. It's from Lick Paint, and it's called white 05. I'll just show you on the tin, that's better. This is a more accurate um, look at the colour. So yeah, white 05 and I'm using eggshell for the walls, which I thought would be best for a bathroom. And this is the colour of the cupboard. So the contrast is making it quite difficult to film this, but this is the colour railings by Farron Ball. And I had this mixed up by a paint company and in a nice robust kind of eggshell finish as well. So this is perfect for the MDF and yeah, it just contrasts really nicely with the tiles and then we've got the chrome edging on the tile and I'm really pleased with it. I think the combination of the kind of natural tile and then the dark cupboards works really well. But yeah, this is just a little sneak peek. I want to just show you how things are developing, but I want to kind of hold off before I show you the room in its entirety until I share that makeover video. So do stay tuned and apologies, it's taking so long, but hopefully it will be done this side of Christmas, although don't hold me to it. I've come up to the loft. I absolutely love coming up here when it's raining because you hear the rain on the window there. What's this one up to? Mittens. Bit of a playground up here. They do like to have a little explore. Um, but yeah, I've got a couple of dumpster diving finds to show you, so I thought I would share those with you as well. Let me know if you're doing any renovations or any decorating in your home, and let me know if any of your projects are taking you as long as mine are taking me. Honestly, I don't know <laughs> how it's been so long, but sometimes things just do take a while, don't they? Especially when you want to get them kind of right, and things like choosing colours, I find really difficult but why rush eh? Anyway um, let me show you the bits that I found. So the first thing you're actually propped on one of them. I found two of these and it's this CD box. So this is an Ikea wooden CD box and I'm not going to be using this for CDs although you could um, but yeah you're on the other one so I propped the camera on one just for the moment but I thought these might make some quite nice storage containers if we put them around this way or even like um planters you know i could maybe coffee stain this or write something on the front you almost use it as a bit of a window box that sort of thing i'm not sure and um, let me know what you would do with this and as i say i've got two of them so i could put one on top of the other i suppose and use the bottom like this one as kind of like a base to raise it up and then have a raised planter that could be an option too it's actually already got some drainage holes in it where it's been screwed to the wall so yeah it was called bow out from ikea and someone was just chucking this out, so I thought I'd rescue it and do something with it. You could also put two together maybe and make like a plinth. You know sometimes people do like a DIY plinth, like plant stand or something. I've seen people using like the marble contact paper on things like this and making like a marble or concrete effect stand. Um, but yeah, I think maybe, maybe a plant container is the best thing to do. But yeah, any ideas would be very welcome. And then the other thing that I found was this. This is quite unusual. This is a metal shelf and it's in the design of a compass that so has this kind of metal top to it, a bit like a pocket watch. And I thought, with it being metal, perhaps I might use it out on the roof garden. I might take the back off, I'm not sure about this design, and even potentially take this part off. I thought this part could actually become like a lamp. You could use this and hang it up and you could put like a light inside there you could stick one of those um, push lights that you can get from the pound shop and make a little hanging lantern that you'd hang up somewhere. So kind of make two things out of this potentially. Um, but yeah, let me know what you would do with this. Another thought I had, let's see if you can guess what I'm gonna think of next. 
what could this be around this time of year? I thought we could spray it, maybe put it this way around, <laughs> although the top bit, no, no, we'd have to do it this way around, but maybe spray it or put some wrapping paper over this part. And then this part we could spray gold, stick a bow on it, and we could make a giant Christmas bauble, like one of those bauble ornaments and then maybe just turn it back into a shelf afterwards. So yeah, lots we could do with that. Um, but any ideas would be more than welcome. And maybe we'll have a little play around with that. Not sure when I'm gonna get time to do all this stuff. <laughs> I couldn't resist with this being thrown out. I thought it would be good to rescue it and see what we can come up with. And those are the bits that I found. So yeah, I'll keep you posted if I do make anything with those and any ideas are welcome. And yeah, I think I might end the video here. Those are kind of all the main home updates I've got at the moment. So yeah, bathroom is nearly there. Um, the loft is still the same as when you last saw it. Um, it's just really nice to have the space up here, somewhere to work at the table here. Once the bathroom is done, the cupboards in there are quite deep. So I'm really looking forward to getting some plastic boxes. So I've already got the boxes, um, but actually being able to organize them properly into the cupboards, because at the moment they are in the bedroom stacked up. And so it'll be really nice just to get things put away properly, all organized and yeah, I'm quite enjoying that sort of thing at this time of year. Just getting some little areas of the home nicely organized, one thing at a time, not rushing anything, and yeah, just pottering about. I'm gonna go and put the slow cooker on, I think. I'm going to throw in some spring greens and some carrots, chickpeas, and I've got some kale as well, some garlic, some ginger, some stock, and make a nice kind of vegetable stew. I think I've got some parsnips as well that I might throw into there. I think that's everything. Um, yeah, it's gonna be kind of like an empty the fridge and throw it all in situation. So that's dinner tonight. And I think I'm gonna have an early night. So I'm gonna end the video here. I'm up bright and early tomorrow to go filming as well. So I come out of the door at 6 a.m. tomorrow. So yeah, it'll be an early night for me. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. I would absolutely love it if you did. And that way you'll never miss a video as well. And yeah, do let me know if you've got any projects going on in your home at the moment, if you're doing any organizing, any cleaning, that sort of thing. I always love to hear what you're up to. Yeah, thank you again so much for watching. If you're watching this on Friday, happy Friday to you. I hope you've had a really good week and are looking forward to the weekend ahead. Whatever it is you're up to, I hope you have a good one and I will see you very soon. Bye.